Typically, when you spend $600 on a computer, you have to be okay with certain compromises in performance. That just isn't the case anymore. So we're gonna start this off talking about the design. First off, this thing is small, like really small. When you compare it to something like the old generation Mac mini, or even something as simple as your iPhone, it's clear to see how small of a footprint this machine really has. And for starting out at $599, in my opinion, this is the best value Mac on the market, period. The port selection for a machine this small is actually pretty solid. You're gonna get two USB 3.0 ports on the front, a 3.5 mil headphone jack with support for high impedance headphones, a gigabit ethernet port, HDMI 3.2 port, which is amazing to see, and three Thunderbolt 4 ports. And if we take a look at the bottom, this is where the intake and exhaust is in one unit. The older design had the exhaust port on the back and the intake on the bottom. With this new design, it leaves a lot more room for ports and allows the machine to be as small as it is. Moving on to general computer use. So as you can see here, I have my desktop opened. If you open up something like the launch pad and just kind of scroll around, in general, this is just blazing fast. We'll open up Safari here, head to a website. Everything just happens in an instant. Especially since Safari has been optimized for Apple Silicon, you can really see how cohesive it is when hardware is paired with optimized software. So I got a few tabs open here. I'm just gonna switch through them. Everything happens basically instantly. So if you're just using this for general computer use, you're gonna see absolutely no hiccups whatsoever. So I currently have OBS open recording this video. I have Ableton Live open. I have DaVinci open, Bitwarden, Safari, and Brave all at the same time. And as you can see, absolutely no hiccups whatsoever. So if you're like me, I don't typically have a bunch of things open at once. But if you're someone that likes to have several things open, this is gonna have no issue whatsoever. Now, moving on to video editing. We'll open DaVinci, fresh, and look at that boot time, holy. What I've done here is I've stacked 12 video tracks together, and as I skim through, there's absolutely zero lag for what you wanna see on the preview screen. No matter where I go, it is instantly updated without a hiccup whatsoever. And this helps so much with my workflow because sometimes I'm working with very large video files, 4K files, it depends on what I'm doing, but when I'm editing, I wanna see what I'm doing instantaneously without any lag whatsoever. On my old M1 MacBook Air, it could barely keep up with video editing and it was very frustrating. Moving on to music production. So if you're a music producer like myself, the M4 Mac Mini is gonna be able to handle anything you throw at it. All right, so I've opened up Ableton Live. I have a MIDI track here. I'm gonna throw a Serum on. A Serum is typically a rather resource intensive plugin. So I wanna do a little test here. All right, so what I've done is I've duplicated this MIDI track 50 times. There's 50 tracks here total. And if you keep an eye on the CPU meter up here, this will let you know the current CPU load. So if we play it, yeah, this is insane. This is insane. Even on my $5,000 PC, this situation would run this CPU meter up to easily 90 plus percent. Yeah, 18 or whatever this is, that's insane. That's insane. Now this is a special use case. You're never really gonna have 50 tracks of the same plugin at the same time. You might, I don't know what your workflow is if you're a producer, but this just goes to show that no matter what you throw at it as a producer, it's gonna be able to handle your workflow. Not to mention too, the Mac mini is so small that if you wanted a nice on the go production solution, you could just throw this machine in your backpack very easily and have an on the go studio solution, which is awesome. All right, next we're gonna look at coding. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is open Xcode. I have a open source Flappy Bird project that we're gonna test out today. So off the hop, I'm gonna run it and we should see the simulator pop up here. Yeah, right there, which that was basically instant. Wow, okay, and we're in, okay. Let's try this out. I don't know how well I'm gonna do, but we'll try this out for a sec here. Man, this is taking me back to high school, I swear. Okay, let's go. Okay, come on now. Let me know in the comments if you think you could do a better job than I am right now. <laughs> oh! Yo, this is embarrassing, man. What are we doing? Come on, man. All right, we're locked, we're locked, we're locked. Get locked. Okay. Oh, oh dude. All right, all right, all right, last try, last try. We gotta get a decent score here, come on now. Oh, okay, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, okay, I'll take a five, I'll take a five. Yeah, let me know in the comments if you think you do a better job than I did, because that was pretty sad, I can't lie. But yeah, so this is a pretty large Xcode project here and it booted up in no time. So whether you're a brand new developer or seasoned, this would be a really, really good machine for your development journey. 
Now, I realize the base model 256 gig isn't enough for some people, but I do have a workaround that worked very well for me that I go over in my last video, helping you save up to $800 on the internal storage. So make sure you check that out. I'll have a link here somewhere or it'll be in the description. But for students or people looking for just a general use computer that's faster than anything they've ever had before, look no further. There's also many cloud services that could help you out if you did want to go for the base model and worry about storage. I never thought we'd see the day where you can get something with this level of performance out of a package that's so small and portable for such a reasonable price. Like I said before, this is easily the best value computer on the market right now, and I can't recommend it enough to basically anybody. And also, if you feel you'd benefit from more internal memory or storage, and you really, really think you need it, then obviously go for the upgrade but I do a lot of professional work myself from video editing, music production, coding, and everything I'll need to do for this channel. And I am confident that this will be able to handle my workflow and then some. So if you're in the market for a new desktop and don't wanna break the bank, I can't recommend the M4 Mac mini enough. This machine will last me a very long time and be able to handle anything I throw at it. If you enjoyed this review and you wanna see the channel grow, consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my upcoming content. I've got some big plans with this channel and I'm very excited to provide the highest level content I possibly can for you guys. And trust me when I say, you will not regret picking up the M4 Mac Mini.